and welcome to Eyewitness Report on Channels Television, a program that focuses on reports about activities around you from the observer's perspective. I'm Yomi or Taibi. This edition highlights the demolition of houses and shanties in the Shongotedo and the coastal areas of Leki in Lagos State. These and more on the show today. Hundreds of residents of Mayegun community in Lagos State were sacked from their homes as the state government commenced the removal of illegal shanties and structures that litter coastal roads in the Lekki area of Lagos State. This action, according to the state government, shows its commitment to urban regeneration. Officials of the Lagos State Ministry of Environment and Water Resources, as well as the Ministry of Physical Planning, and visited Mayego community in Lekki to issue notice of relocation to squatters as the state government plans to demolish shanties around the Lagos Coastal Road. Shanties close to the regional road alignment must be cleared. The notification was met with positive response from residents. Because it's not our place, we are just looking for daily bread here. But we will remove everything, let them give us a little time. We will do that. We will remove more. We have a lot of environmental issues here. You know, there's a drainage um, canal being built. There's a drainage on the other side. Um, you also have a lot of sanitation problem within. You know, we're just looking at a swamp, you know, just at the corner over there. So this would be a serious concern to the Ministry of Environment. The living condition of the people here is really uh, pathetic, it is terrible, and it is not something that should, should be encouraged. So we should assist these people to relocate into proper spaces where they will feel more comfortable and they will not be prone to diseases and uh, a lot of hazards. You know, enforcement starts with, um, with the people. So the enforcement has commenced, like I told you. They started self-compliance, self-enforcement, and removing these things. You know, Baba was just here with me now. I don't know, I saw Baba a couple of minutes ago. You know, those, all those who, uh, part of the original Jack um, uh leaders and occupants, you know, they are also fully in support of what we are doing and, you know, they are also complaining about their structures that are now weak, which we will subject to integrity tests before we decide what we are going to do further. So what we're trying to do right now is to remove the shanties. You are something. We are not uh, removing the Jack on Day houses because there's a procedure for that and the government is going to have a proper and total plan, you know, for regeneration, renewal, redevelopment of this area. You know, part of what we're doing today is also in tandem with what the federal government is doing. So you can see the Ministry of Environment from Lagos State, the Ministry of Physical Planning, Office of Physical Planning, Office of uh, Urban Development, you know, I've just mentioned LASRA, you know, and also the federal government. Everyone, you know, is, is here trying to do so, all hands on deck to make sure that, uh, you know, we can give our people the dividends of democracy. My name is Alaji Abu Salam Salam, yes, and I've been resident at Jakondi as far back as 1990, November 1. Okay. When the matter of Jakondi comes up, 207, Commissioner Duro Nobule for housing, he sent a letter to us, said that he want to see us. So we went to him, and we discussed together with him. That you can't give us a letter for 48 hours that you should, you should remove away from Jakondi. We people are Jack on the, we are landlord people. What will happen is that 
if you want to develop the jack on the, you have to develop it as Dolphin area. You know the, pro, the program at Dolphin area? The land they are there, and they are developing the Dolphin area with them. So that's the same thing we want it to happen here, to the houses. So that 2007, I told them that once they agree, we go with them. But they are not agreed then. Even I asked the commissioner then that how many hectares of land do we have at Jagundi? You know the number of hectares of we have at land there? I raise up my hand. But once you don't know it, that's why we are here today. So when the government come now, I don't. They just call me when they reach a stage. They are not informed me before. I've not been informed before. But once they call me, and as a good citizen, I have to answer them. The landlord, what happened? Say that this what I'm this what they, they came here to go around and demolish all the shanties, houses. The people who own shanties, if they have paper, they show government. Shanties, you can't have paper. Uh, no, some of them, listen to me. I'm here as far back as 1990. Some of them maybe have shanties and have their paper. When they reach there, ask them where is your paper. You have to bath before you, uh, you clean. Uh, ask them their paper. So when you have them their paper, they can't produce their paper. You know you're on the right track. Depending on where the government decides to take, we have the Paco, we have the block, and we have the existing Jack on there. But if they are to take over the Paco area, but I don't think Paco should have anything to do with the block, which is the Jaconde existing area. Because I overheard one of them say the whole Jaconde is going. In the constitution, you don't evacuate people twice under the constitution. But you're evacuating these guys twice. They were evacuated from Sanfield to Jaconde. That is the Morocco, former Morocco to Jaconde. And now you're moving them to Jaconde. You are evacuating them from Jaconde again. Where are you evacuating them to? Where are you sending them to? A lot of them here will be rendered houseless, homeless, without anything. And their families and everything. Where do you think they will go to? If you are taking the illegal property, we know this is where the coastal lane is going through. But presently now, the project has not been on ground so far. But why don't you relocate them to a better place where they can have a coverage if you don't need them here? you make provision for that. In Etiosa here, an average house is now is about 450,000 Naira. An individual with 400, people like this cannot afford 450,000 Naira. Where do you want them to go to? I record everything. You record there. Yes. Talk to me now. You record there. What is happening? Talk to me now. The people who are here, we need to account for them. You know, so the first question I will ask them is, I mean, have you registered with LASRA? Government cannot continue to provide for people who you cannot even account for. So first we need to be able to account for you. So I advise everybody who is living here, you know, to go to LASRA and be accounted for. If they are accounted for, I can assure you that government knows who to relocate. I mean, tell me, who are we going to make provision for when we don't even know who they are? Four days later, the state government commences the removal of all the shanties. The enforcement is spearheaded by the Lagos State Special Task Force on Environmental and Special Offences. Surprisingly, some squatters who remained after the expiration of the quit notice are forced to move their belongings amidst the enforcement. Let them be adequate notice for us to have 
not they have been proud noted, but that was to the people at the other side for the coastal road. That was what we said that the coastal road is coming, that most of the shanties in that area will be taken off to make way for the coastal road that is coming. But what we are witnessing now is beyond the coastal road. What we are seeing now is, a, is an enforcement to demolish the estate and not even the coastal road that we were talking about. So what do we want the government to do? We want the government to stop this process, at least dialogue with the citizens. We are all the citizens of this country so that they can, the people can be adequately moved from this place. Everything is done, everything is done, everything has paralyzed. Business, health, health. somebody have just collapsed. Somebody have just collapsed. The children, they are schools here, the children are out of schools. Many of them could not go, so many children were running here and there. He has paralyzed everything and coupled with the economic hardship of this, of this time. I feel so bad. Why? Because they did not notify any of the people here. It was uh, last week that they came and told some of the people that from here to there they are doing coastal road and they are giving them 20 meters. That the people should move a bit from the road, 20 meters from the road. So suddenly they now went into the estate and demolished part of the estate building that have allocation paper. So and we are trying to tell them that those houses they have their allocation paper, but instead of them uh, listening to listening to us, they came and start running after us, chasing us away. Even there is a man called Ariwayo, he brought out the estate layout to show them they did not care to listen to him. So we feel very bad. As soon as they notify people, people can move, uh, move out some uh, their things before today. But they were here last week. Right? They were here last week to notify people that we're here, that they give them 20 meter uh, step back uh, before the road. So, but people inside the estate did not tell them anything. They did not notify them. Today, it was one policeman just came and talked to me that I should tell my people that they should move their things. And I said, but they didn't say they will come to this place. We saw where they put their, uh, paste, where they paste their something there. They are from year to year. So we did not know. Everyone is aware. You see, there is nowhere people will not uh, feign in ignorance. So everyone is aware, and then they, this is something that has been on since um, 2022, thereabouts, in terms of trying to take inventory of all the houses. If you notice, you will see that we are not touching those bona fide um, buildings. The ones that are all the only ones that they are touching are the shanties that cannot be accounted for. However, before this exercise. There have been a lot of sensitization. You remember we came here on Sunday to even warn them. And also those buildings that you are seeing, those buildings are already dilapidated already. One can even see them right now. And there have been inventory of everyone. So everyone that has legal document have been inventorized. We already know where they are and then we will get to them. As it stands, these residents have no other choice than to relocate, at least to find shelter somewhere before the next move. Welcome back. What would you do when you find yourself in a situation that seems too much to cope with, like seeing your home totally demolished right before your eyes? This was the experience of some homeowners and residents of Hopeville Estate, located in the Shongutedo area of Etiosa, local government area of Lagos State. <laughs> An excavator plunges its pocket into a finished house in Hopeville Estate. 
Security personnel accompanied by a task force from the Lagos State Building Control Agency descends on the estate with heavy duty equipment for a demolition exercise, leaving several homes in ruins. Residents watch helplessly as their houses are reduced to rubble and debris scattered on the road. Although no resident is willing to speak on camera, they claim to be unprepared for the sudden demolition of their homes, arguing that the notice was insufficient. Prior to the exercise, a media conference was held where the general manager of the Lagos State Building Control Agency cited non-approval of building plans as justification for the demolition. We are going to remove those buildings without building plan approval. The law says before you build, you must get your planning permit. It's when you have your planning permit that you are entitled to build, and at the same time, you must come to Lagos State Building Control to get the authorization to start so that building will be staged for safety of the people that are going to live in it and the owner. But they decided not to do the needful. So Lagos State Building Control is going to remove all those property that does not have building plan approval and that they are encroaching on other people's territory. So this is not a sentiment uh, situation because those that bought it before now, or those that got the CFO need to have something to do with their money. We can't say because some people build on it, we should now turn their place. It's because we have been turning our eyes. That's why most of them believe that they can do anything and they can always build. It be is for them to. We have to stop that out of yes. Once we've uh, once we've moved to site, nothing will happen. We need to stop it in Lagos State. And this is the best time that we can do it. 
and every other person should know that it's not only in one part, it's all over Lagos State. And we are going to deal with the situation across the board. All we just want them to do is to do the needful by applying. All of them do get properties abroad and they build. They know that you cannot do anything without having the approval. And there are laws, there are laws in Lagos State. The law of Lagos State must be uphold. If you want to stay in Lagos State, stay within the law. That is all Lagos State Building Control is asking for. So that we cannot have a peaceful environment. The infrastructures are there. Most of them are building on the roads. Those that are shown to you, they are all properties on the road. They have layout approval. And we are going to do the needful. These are buildings that was, uh, they've been served from foundation. The Omonile will arrest my staff just simply because they believe they are, they are too big for the laws. And the owners, they are called the dear devils because they see the mark of Lagos State Building Control, because they believe that nothing will happen, they continue. So this is not a situation whereby we have sympathy for people that are doing wrong thing. It's a situation whereby we need to take the bull by the arm by ensuring that the right thing is being done, both by people building, the developers, and the omonile. Furniture and other household items line sidewalks as a testament to the abrupt displacement of residents. Some homeowners resort to selling items and building material salvage from the debris as scraps to scavengers. With the ongoing demolition, one wonders how residents of Hope Villa State will grapple with the uncertainty and seemingly the daunting task of rebuilding their lives. Here's a reminder that you can participate as a reporter on this program by using your mobile device to capture activities within your neighborhood. Through the Channel TV mobile app installed on your phone, tablet or laptop, you can upload the pictures and videos on the eyewitness section of the app. If you don't have the app, do download it from online stores. Remember to provide the information that will enable us to get in touch with you as we follow up to develop your story. Let's see some of the pictures sent in. We begin this segment with an eyewitness video showing a scene of commotion after a waste disposal truck fell off a bridge in Suruleri and landed on vehicles. The truck, owned by the Lagos State Waste Management Agency, was reportedly driving through the Shita Bridge when it developed a mechanical fault while in motion. The number of casualties was not stated by the eyewitness at the time the video was sent, but it was later learned that the commercial tricycle operator was killed in the process. <laughs> A motorist driving through the rehabilitated section of the Third Mainland Bridge in Lagos appreciates the new look of the road infrastructure in the next video. The Third Mainland Bridge, which has been undergoing maintenance for weeks, is the longest of three bridges connecting Lagos Island to the mainland. This segment concludes with a video of residents and road users protesting the deplorable state of Agura, Berigbe Road in Ikorodu. They are appealing to the legal state and federal government to fix the road. Is it not our road? Ah, sing! Everybody shall sing! 
Thanks for your contributions and thank you for watching. See you again same time next week. I am Jomi Otaigui.